You're listening to The At Home Welder, Episode 5. In this episode, we're going to go over the best technique to avoid heat distortion while welding sheet metal and a huge announcement for the At Home Welder community. Welcome to the Welding Tips Podcast by the At Home Welder, the premier podcast for teaching you the best welding tips, tricks, and techniques for the beginner and hobbyist welder. Whether you're the weekend warrior sparking up the garage or the newbie trying to get started today, the Welding Tips Podcast will guide your hand the whole way there. And now here's your host, Andy the At Home Welder. Hey guys, it's Andy the At Home Welder here again. Welcome back to another fine, fine episode of the show. And you may have heard in the intro there that there are some changes coming to the at-home welder community. There is a huge change coming to the podcast in the form of we're changing the podcast. Going to shorten it, going to tweak it, and give you guys exactly what you've been asking for. Uh, Sent out a poll, been asking the community for a couple weeks now, uh, you know, how do you want how do you want me to steer this? What what way is going to best serve uh, the at-home welder community? And, you know, you sent me back great, great responses. I thank you so much for the responses that you've given me and that you continue to send them in. Please keep keep sending in your comments and questions because I love them. They're helping, helping to really make this a great community. Now, so as far as the podcast goes, we are changing the name, changing the format, and we're going to change the time schedule a little bit. Uh, I'm going to keep everything down to around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you know, I think that's just a good time span. It gets a little long sometimes when you're talking about the boring business stuff, unfortunately. Um, we're going to have some great interviews, uh, you know, local welders here around me. If you guys know of any great local welders, artisans, uh, just cool people that would be great to interview or you would like to interview and you have questions for them, let me know if I can get them on the show. I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, interviews are something I've, I've been wanting to do for a long time and uh, I've already got some great ones lined up. So those will be coming up in the future. Um, and the, the heart of everything is going to be the welding techniques, welding tips and tricks and uh, cool tools that I use and or, or that I've uh, basically invented and come up with uh, to help me in my everyday welding. And we're just going to go over that. Uh, and uh, the other part of it is going to be questions and answers. Um, you know, half of the show is going to be your questions and, an- and the answers that I'm going to give you. And I, I think that's just really going to be a great thing to do a question and a- Q&As are just... They're always so informative uh, on both parts. I mean, not only is it going to be great for you guys to actually an- ask questions and, and have answers to your questions, but it's going to be great for me to have questions thrown at me. I mean, uh, some stuff I might not have done in a while, and I, I could really use a refresher, and keeping things like that top of mind is really going to help all of us to be uh, much better at what we do. And that is the end result here is for us to all get better and to be able to create really cool, amazing works of art. Um, and uh, so that's that's what we're doing here. Um, so we're going to be calling this the Welding Tips Podcast uh, by the At Home Welder. I know it's not sexy, it's not exactly exciting, but it's straight and to the point. And I think it really kind of sums up what the podcast is going to be about. So welcome to the uh, the very last episode of the At Home Welder Podcast and the very first episode of the Welding Tips Podcast. So um, today we're going to go ahead and uh, we're, the first tip we're going to go into is going to be the best way to avoid that uh, warping of sheet metal when you're welding it. Everybody knows that once you uh, you start welding on some sheet metal, especially that thin stuff, you start laying down those beads, and it's just it never fails. It starts to warp and bend up. So that's going to be our first tip, and then we're going to go into a few questions and answers, and that's going to be it. So this is exciting. I'm I'm excited about doing this. So let's go ahead and get into the first tip. All right, so if anyone, if you've if you've ever welded any kind of sheet metal or any kind of thin flat bar or, any, or anything thin like that and it has any kind of link to it, you know that as soon as you start welding, the further along you get down, the more it's going to start to bend. And there's abs- there's just no way that you're ever going to get it flat again. It just doesn't happen. You can roll it, you can stomp on it, you can step on it, do whatever you want. It's just not going to come out. Now, this is a problem that 
is never going to go away. And the, the, the reason for the problem is the heat generated from the weld. Now, the hotter that you get the metal, the more the metal is going to want to contract. The more it's going to want to warp and, and be pulled in. And that's just something that, that that's always going to be there with any kind of welding. And honestly, it's, it's not just with sheet metal. It's going to be with tubing and anything of that nature, any kind of metal at all. It's just, you know, thicker things, it takes a lot more heat for it to bend in. So that's why sheet metal is always plagued with this problem. Now, the best thing that I have ever come up with to do inside of the shop, especially being by myself and, and, and trying to deal with this problem, is say you have two pieces of sheet that you want to you want to weld together in the middle. Now, what I'll do is I take my two pieces of sheet and I take like a two by four or maybe a, a bigger piece of uh, scrap metal that I have laying around, anything that's long and straight and flat. And I will use that as a brace on one end of, of each side of the sheet. So I'll clamp it down to a table somehow. And now that doesn't solve the problem but what it does is it, it just helps add some more downforce to keep it from pulling up. Now, sometimes if I'm having to lay like a very long bead or it's say it's just like two pieces of really big sheet, I'll actually clamp down all sides. Oh, well, four, two sides of each, of each sheet. What I'll do is I'll clamp down uh, the edges and then I'll also clamp down towards the center where I'm actually going to be welding the pieces together. Now I don't, since I'm usually using two by fours because that's kind of the cheapest, easiest thing that I have laying around to do that, I don't want to get uh, the two by fours too close to where I'm welding, obviously because of the heat and it's going to start to burn the, uh, the wood. But just by having that added pressure pushed down where I'm welding really, really helps uh, keep, keep things flat and keep them from, from bowing from the heat. Now, another great tip is just in the actual welding itself, don't lay one long consist consistent bead. Don't keep welding on and on and on and on and on until you're done because that's going to generate massive amounts of heat and you're probably going to end up blowing through uh, the sheet metal anyway. So you want to just, you want to do this in little sections um, and you've probably, you may have seen this in a lot of little welding videos and, and stuff like that like on YouTube and online, but you'll see people where they'll actually They'll do a little weld, and they'll stop. And they'll weld, and then they'll stop. Now, you don't have to do little tacks, but say you weld for maybe an inch and stop for a second. Give it a break to cool down a little bit. You don't have to let it cool uh, totally and completely, but you know, just give it a few seconds just to chill out for a little bit, and then you can start up again. And then stop chill out for a few seconds and then start up again. Now, it's kind of a longer process and, you know, it might seem tedious, especially if you're having to weld a long piece, but you can take 99% of that bowing and warping out of your metal just by doing that one process alone. So even if you don't have anything to clamp down with and have downforce on those pieces of metal, that will greatly reduce uh, the warping factor just by taking little steps. Now you're definitely going to have warping if you just breeze all the way through it. It's just it's just going to happen. And like I said, you're probably going to blow through the metal anyway. Um, but those are great, great, great tips. That's pretty much how I weld any kind of sheet together or any kind of long pieces of flat bar as I'll clamp them down, make sure they're good and secure with some, some good downforce. And then I'll just take it, you know, like little inches at a time, inches at a time. And you can, in that that will vary depending on the thickness of your metal as well. Now, also, you know, the temperature of your, your welder is also plays a, a, a main factor. Um, you know, if you're welding thin stuff, then you need to turn your amperage down. Um, that's just kind of a given. But, well, it may not be a given. But you make sure that your amperage is down low enough so that you're not going to blow through, but not too low so that you're not going to get a good weld. You need to bond the two pieces uh, together. Now as you get st uh, 